Okay, now I'd like to turn back to a, the framework, uh, in this case, uh, as applied by Kalansis and Cope with regards to recommendations post-pandemic. And they, they, they boiled these down to five different uh, recommendations to scale up higher ed, scale down the cost. We can talk about, we'll talk about each of these individually. Develop pedagogies of social knowledge and collaborative intelligence, create pedagogies of intense engagement, focus on higher order learning, which I was just talking about, and make this a continuum of lifelong and life wide learning. Uh, so we'll talk. Let's now talk about each of these individually, and I also want to build in what the ABMC's uh, effort on competency-based veterinary education is now recommending uh, as a framework for building out curricula. So the idea of scaling up higher education, scaling down its cost, might be controversial, um, but uh, we have a high cost of veterinary education. I'm not going to spend any more time on that. We all know this. Um, and we know that many of the new schools are using a distributed prac, uh, set of clinics, if you will. They're not building clinics. They're distributing those. We talked about the commuting issues. And um, in addition, and to prepare for this while they're still with you in a class, uh, you need to do more preclinical preparation for those clinical experiences that might be um, done in remote clinics. And blended and self-paced learning can be used to do this. Now, the second recommendation is to develop pedagogies of social knowledge and collaborative intelligence. Um, the first one may not particularly be social knowledge, may not click with you very well. So let me talk about it. You want to engage students in communicating and collaborating. And there's ways to formalize this and do this with even an anonymous peer review using certain um, platforms. And I will highlight one that we've been working with. Um, this, if properly set up, can put them in a position that is similar to what they'll need to be in as a professional. So we need to train them to do this. Um, it was noted during that by medical schools that uh, the adjustments that many of the instructors made uh, in the medical colleges led to students practicing more mastery learning and content application. So that sounds more like cases, doesn't it? Uh, so I think this is this is the kind of interactive milieu that I think we uh, we should be thinking for regard, with regards to the future. The third recommendation is create pedagogies of intense engagement. So let's remember the idea that we want long-term learning, that this is going to be better than just delivering content because we have no, no longer the ability to deliver all the content anymore. I'll make that point a little bit later. Uh, we need to put the students in the position of being knowledge producers, and they need to be part of a community where they contribute uh, to these knowledge communities. This is the way they're going to live the rest of their profession. Uh, the digital community may facilitate a more comprehensive assessment at the same time through analytics of how the student is progressing towards this professional standard. The fourth recommendation is the, and we'll spend a few slides on this, is to focus on higher order of thinking. Critical clinical thinking and problem solving is what needs to be emphasized early on. And um, to emphasize in this process, uh, a recursive feedback associated with formative learning over, say, a draft student's work or, um, you know, where they, they, they can feel like they're more comfortable with putting out their ideas, getting them pushed back to them, maybe by peers, maybe by an instructor. And we do this instead of basically more definitive, summative, end game uh, assessments. Now, you may all say, well, we have to prove, you know, that these students know what they know. Well, many times we're long when they're in the clinic, we know that they haven't remembered many of the things that they've they've succeeded at knowing uh, even months just before that uh, clinical experience. Now, focusing on pharmacology, which uh, hopefully you've been seeing the parallels here for what you, if you're a pharmacology educator, teach, I want to give you a quote 
from Colossus and Cope again, we can look up far more knowledge than we could ever remember. So the foundational objectives of education change. Learning is about careful navigation of at-hand knowledge resources. Example, today's graduate capabilities include evidence-based reasoning, argumentation in support of verifiable claims, and testable judgment calls. Online environments can uniquely achieve this by leveraging collaborative knowledge processes we just talked about. But we have in our hand, as shown here, a basically information about drugs. If students know the framework in which that information is organized and know how to query it, know how to ask the right questions, know how to look for drug interactions, etc., then we are way far, way much further ahead, and we need to train them starting from the beginning of their pharmacology education. Now let's look at how this jives with what's going on out there in the general um, effort towards competency-based veterinary education as the AAVMC is espousing. Um, basically, clinical reasoning and decision-making is one domain of, of, of performance that they're looking for. That includes gathering and assimilating information, synthesizing and prioritizing problems, getting a differential diagnosis, and then finally, really relevant to us, creating and adjusting a diagnostic or treatment plan based on available evidence. We'll now hone down into this, into these competencies. As a subset of, these, of this um, framework are the entrustable professional activities and man, developing and, man, and implementing a management or treatment plan is one of them. And I wanna highlight some things in this commentary. Developing a management treatment plan is an iterative, reflective process that requires synthesis of medical, ethical, legal, and economic factors, as well as knowledge. And um, so these are the kinds of things that uh, we need to be thinking that are higher level order, higher order thinking. Honing down to the competencies, create and adjust a diagnostic and or treatment plan based on available evidence. That should be self-explanatory. Now, the next one is where I think the case examples come in, where you lay out a scenario of what the client can do, what other diseases the animal might have, uh, animal welfare issues. These all have to be factored into a diagnostic and a treatment plan. And so the ability for that student to look at the complexities of life and not just sort of say, okay, well, here's the problem, here's the disease, and here's the treatment. We need to know everything in between. And to make those of you feel better from the FDA, we have to do this as veterinarians within the legal and regulatory requirements of our profession. It's part of our professional responsibility. Now, our colleagues, some of whom are at this meeting are, and will speak after me, um, have already begun to focus on day one competencies with regards to clinical pharmacology. And this particular web, this particular article um, is highlighted on the BPT website. So we're now getting to more uh, attention to what the specific requirements are underneath these general ones of the um, AAVMC. Now the fifth recommendation is about lifelong and life-wide learning, and this um, comes to the competency of being able to self-recognize your own limitations of knowledge, go out and get that CE, and to consult with others as appropriate. The reality is we can no longer teach everything in vet school, and even if we do, after one semester, half of it is, is not valid anymore. So 70 days is the half-life of medical information, and that was in 2020. So the day one competencies um, that we include, and these really are relevant to pharmacology, include evidence-based reasoning, argumentation in support of verifiable claims, and testable judgment calls. And I would argue that interactive cases or case analyses are a way to bring this forward. So as part of this lifelong and life-wide learning, we need to introduce students to the responsibility that they have, professional responsibility, as shown by this competency, to uh, engage in their own self-directed learning. And that becomes 
having them see the continuity between veterinary school skills that they've learned there and what they might need to go out and get later as things change. This is a standard of professional performance and self-reflection and self-correction of deficiencies is a big part of it, as is collaboration. So um, learning in the judgment skills or being, um, you know, working in teams, etc., can be simulated by online environments to leverage collaborative knowledge. And this is a big part of one domain of being a professional, and that is collaboration.